Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, my name is Dr. Avinash Dadich. I am a Professor of Law and Dean of Institute of Legal Studies and Research, GLA University, Mathura. Dear students, when I started uh, you know, thinking about this program, then the one idea was in, in my mind that normally the business school students, BBA, MBA and the other business executives, they used to think that law means the law enacted by the government, then the advocates, then judiciary, police, you know, all this type of very classical organizations which we are observing since thousands year. However, during the last 70 to 80 years, what we have observed that few specialized agencies or the regulators, we call them regulators, they have been developed in our country and they are the global level. Okay. So, in this lecture, we will talk about the theories of regulation and functioning of few regulatory bodies in India. Why we are talking about the regulation and regulatory bodies? Because they are very, very uh, different type of organizations. They are, uh, they are the part of government, but they are not working under the government. So, that is very special relationship, you know. Uh, they are not protected by any constitutional provision, just like the High Court and Supreme Court and other judiciary. Uh, they are enacted by the government to do something very, very specific task in our economy. Okay. So, let us understand the theories of regulations and then functioning of few regulatory bodies. Theories of regulation, the development and techniques of regulations have been the subject of research in business school. Two basic school of thought have emerged on regulatory policy namely positive theory of re regulation and normative theory of regulation. So, what is the positive theory of regulation? This theory says that the regulation examines why regulation occurs, why regulatory bodies are required, you know, why, why we cannot solve those issues through the normal courts, you know. The point is like for example, if I talk about the banks, you know, so the, when we started the concept of bank, so, initially in India, maybe, you know, obviously the banking was there before the RBI, you know, I am not saying the organized banking, but unorganized banking, people were giving loans to each other, people were charging interest from each other. So, it was not like that the first time uh, a new type of banking has emerged. However, when we see the complex nature of banking now and 100 years back, or the, uh, the, stake, the, the stock market or a telecom market, insurance market, you know all these things they have been so complex now and so competitive. So, and it is a very special field. So, it is difficult to expect from the government like the normal bureaucrats and civil servants to understand these things because they are very technical in nature. Like if I talk about the uh, suppose the RBI or SEBI like for example, SEBI. So, SEBI is dealing with very specific issue of stock exchange market. Okay. So, it is very, very technical and the person who is sitting in the finance ministry in Delhi may not be have that expertise to understand the nitty gritties of the stock exchange market. So, we need some someone, some organization who can understand that technical aspects of the sector or the market and then do something. Okay. So, the first thing why it occurs because the uh, because the government is not very efficient, this, the, the normal machinery of the government is not that efficient and these markets keep changing very quickly. So, like suppose if something is happening in the market, so it is not static, maybe the, uh, if you talk about this telecom sector, you can easily see in last 10 years the telecom sector has changed completely from a normal mobile company to a uh, internet service provider, they are, they are doing so many things now. Okay. So, with the rapid change in the sector, we cannot expect from the government to adopt their rules, regulations, their policies, their understanding so quickly. 
Okay. That is why we need such type of regulators. These theories of regulation include theory of theories of market power, interest group theories that describe that stakeholders interest in regulations and theories of government opportunism that describe why restrictions on government discretion may be necessary for the government to provide efficient service to customers. Okay. So, there are basically three theories here in the positive theory. The first is that uh, market power because we do not want that in any sector someone becomes so powerful, so big, so dominant that that player or that company starts abusing its dominance or you know doing something illegal, unethical, exploitative behavior against the competitor as well as the consumer. So, that is the one thing that we do not want market power that is why we need specialized agencies. The second is interest group you know because See, once the market becomes very complex, even the stakeholders in the market like the companies, consumers, they start demanding that now we need a specialized agency who can take care of our needs. Okay. Because you cannot expect that thing from the government. Like for example, if I give the example of insurance sector. So, all insurance companies what they wanted now there, ha there should be an insurance body who can tell us what is legal, what is not illegal. and instead of dealing with the bureaucrats in the ministries you know and they keep changing very frequently they do not have practical and the uh, market reality understanding of the insurance sector. So, instead of dealing with government directly the market or the interest groups they like to interact with the regulator and the third one is the government's opportunism like government wants to control everything you know like historically if you see uh, uh, 30, 40 years back then even in India government was controlling everything like for example, if you wanted to apply for a phone first you need to file an application in the government, government will give you number <coughs> it will take 2 to 3 years, 4 years you know. So, everything or even in insurance you know like there was only one company LIC. So, if you wanted to buy insurance you just need to go to the LIC. So, the idea was that the government wanted to control every aspect of citizens life you know they, they never wanted to open the market. But in last 30, 40 years what we have observed in India once we opened the sector, once we opened our economy then new players are entering into market competition is happening. In that scenario we do not want like the companies do not want that now the government should control everything you know. So, we are ready to follow rules and regulations. but because the government is already doing business like you know in insurance sector, in telecom sector, in so many other sectors government is also doing business. So, there is a conflict of interest situation you, you can understand the government is doing business at the same time government is trying to control the insurance sector, banking sector because we have some private banks and government banks. So, in that scenario the, uh, the this theory says that we want some someone absolutely different so that the government can focus on some core areas of governance you know the law and order infrastructure development health you know some some very core areas instead of you know doing business and competing with these all private players regulator agencies uh, regulators and their role in market what they do regulator agencies play a major role in the policy outcome of the state the key functions of regulation such as legislature and execution of regulatory mandates are discharged through the agencies existing in different for, for, uh, forums across different level of government. So, their main job is that first a law is made by the government and then within that law the government gives a mandate to that regulatory body that okay, as per this law now the SEBI Act 1992 the, the main job of the SEBI was to regulate the uh, financial market or the you know stock exchange market okay equity market so they get a very clear mandate from the government side they can be seen as a separate department within a ministry or as a separate entity with their own statutory foundation okay independent regulatory agencies or they can be supranational bodies also so there can be different levels of regulatory bodies one they can be the part of the department like so many regulatory bodies are working within the ministries. Okay. So, uh, they have less autonomy 
and some regulatory bodies they have their own statutory foundation statutory foundation means that they are being enacted by the law by the government okay so now they have their own rules regulations in the proper legal shape you know and there can be some supranational bodies also that they are have pan india presence okay so you will find different types of regulators as per the uh, need of the uh, regulator and the market the actions of these regulators are of a critical importance in the design and execution of regulatory function the regulatory bodies were established to create a transparent accountable system free of political interference and protect consumer interest while allowing for market freedom to exist so their job is very very dynamic so their first job is that they want to create a transparent and accountable system in the market you know there there has to be some transparency and accountability in the market and they want to create a system where political interference is very very minimum you know because when you are dealing with government then uh, if, if they are working under the government without having an autonomy then political interference can create lot of inefficiencies in the market but they want to be free from the political interference and they want to protect the interest of the consumer okay but at the same time they also want to protect the freedom of trade like people can do their business in their manner so it's like a very multi dimensional job which they are doing right now so that's very interesting and regulation is a very specialized form of administration regulators have special powers and that is formal separation from the minister ministries indeed but within the institutional mosaic okay so like for example sebi sebi is coming under the ministry of finance okay but it's coming within the ministry of finance but it doesn't uh, get the orders from ministry of finance it it is it it has its own uh, ecosystem rules and regulations and auto, autonomy so it's very specialized form of administration okay so most of the time when we talk about the public administration it's very generic in nature you know the civil servants they are doing so many things are uh, doing maybe x y z they are talking about education health so many things you know but here that regulator and their officers are doing just one job which is given to them by the government through the legislature mandate so now let's talk about few uh, regulators the first one is sebi okay why was sebi formed at the end of 1970s and during the 1980s capital market was emerging as the new sensation among the individuals of india many mal practices started taking place such an unofficial self styled merchant bankers unofficial private placement rigging of price non adherence of the provision of companies act violation of rules and regulations of stock exchanges delay in delivery of shares and price rigging so in during 70s and 80s i believe that you know that after especially in 90s we have seen so many scams like the harshad mehta scheme and so many other scams also so in during that time the stock uh, stock exchange market was taking a shape in india but uh, and the some uh, even indus was the co common man they were also investing in stock exchange it was just the beginning of the stock market but because there was no rule and regulation and no regulatory body so they were involved in all types of irregular unethical and illegal practices due to these mal practices people started lo losing confidence in the stock market the government felt a sudden need of set up a regulatory authority to regulate the working and reduce these mal practices as a result government came up with the establishment of the sebi so to uh, to counter the mal practices in the stock exchange market the government start uh, established sebi role of sebi this regulatory uh, authority act as a watchdog for all the capital market participants and its main purpose is to provide such an environment for the financial market that facilitate the efficient and smooth functioning or working of the securities market sebi also play an important role in the economy uh, how they play important role in the economy because if the security market is functioning very well then people have interest in the companies see if you want to see the nerves of any country like how they are developing how efficient they are 
you just need to see their uh, the functioning of their stock exchange you know if the stock exchange is emerging growing it means the country is also growing because stock exchange is nothing but the consolidation uh, of all uh, big companies in india so all bi if big companies are emerging in india like top 50 top 100 it means that india is also emerging okay to make this happen it ensures that three main participants of the financial markets are taken care of the first one is issuer of the securities like the companies investors and financial intermediaries so there are three people in the financial market first is the company second the consumer and there is a middle man who is connecting these two people okay issuer of the certificates these are entities in the corporate field that, are, that raise funds from the various sources in the market. These organizations make sure that they get a healthy and transparent environment for their needs. The investors, investors are the one who keep the market active. Obviously, these are the people who are putting money in, uh, in the market. These regulatory, uh, this regulatory authority is responsible for maintaining the environment that is free from malpractices to restore the confidence of the general pe people who invest their hard earned money in the markets. So, the investors interest is the foremost and the most important job of the SEBI. Until and unless people are not having faith in the investment market or in the security market, then they will not put their hard earned money in the capital market. And financial intermediaries. These are the people who act as a middleman between the issuer and the investors. They make the financial transaction smooth and safe. So, we need these people also. It is not like the companies and investors and there is a very big knowledge gap or transaction gap. So, we need a strong financial intermediaries who can connect these two people very effectively. Functions of SEBI. The main primary three functions are protective functions, regulatory function and development function. Okay. So, we will see all these three one by one. Protective functions, as the name suggests, these functions are performed by SEBI to protect the interest of investors and other financial participants. Okay. So, what they do in this protective, see, they are trying to protect the people, uh, the, all the three stakeholders. It includes checking price rigging that no one is doing price rigging. What is price rigging basically? Where people are uh, collaborating with each other illegally to fix the price. Okay, that what should be the price of this particular uh, stock? So then the top ten players they sit together and they decide. Okay, this stock should uh, collapse. This stock should rise. You know. So instead of demand and supply and market fundamental realities. Uh, the stocks are uh, are coming down and going up due to this price rigging. Prevent insider trading. So, what is insider trading? That suppose you are working in a company or you have some confidential information about that company because of your professional connection. You may be consultant or you may be anyone. So, if you have that information, if you know that the company is going down because they have you know uh, suppose like you have this information that company is going to lose maybe 1 billion dollar contract in next 10 days you know if you have that information that you know that the price of the share of that company will also uh, go down so you know if you have positive or negative whatever information you you have and if you use that information to make some profit in the stock exchange market like you claim that okay you put your money that the share will go down so, or if you have some information that company is going to take 10 billion dollar order from the government in next 7 days, you know it is a very confidential information, very few people are aware of it. If you have this knowledge, you will buy the share right now and you know that after 7 days it will increase by 10, 15, 20, 30 percent. So, this type of insider trading, you know you if you have some uh, privileged knowledge, you cannot use that knowledge for trading. So, that is called pre insider trading. Promote fair practices, you know in the market everybody should work in a fair and uh, you know transparent manner. So, they promote fair practices, create among awareness among investors. This is very important for SEBI until and unless investors are aware about their legal rights, about their uh, you know the rights under the SEBI, rights under the uh, other laws connected to SEBI. 
how they will know that someone is cheating with them. So, they create lot of awareness uh, among the investors and prohibit fraudulent unfair trade practices. So, if someone is doing something any fraudulent or unfair practices, they like to stop it. Okay? Then the second is regulatory functions. These regulatory functions include designing guidelines and code of conduct for the proper functioning of the financial intermediaries and corporates. So, they create rules and regulations for companies and the intermediaries, the middlemen, you know, they, they tell them what they are, what they can do, what they cannot do. So, they really create a good guidelines, a roadmap for all the people that what is allowed and what is not allowed. So, in case if they have any doubt, they can go to the SEBI and the SEBI can tell them that as per my guidelines, as per my rules and regulation, X activity is allowed or not. Regulation of takeover of companies. So, if companies are uh, taking over by other companies, they need to take approval from the SEBI. Conducting inquiries and audit of exchange, okay. registration of brokers, sub brokers, merchant bankers. So, everyone who is working as a middleman must be registered with the SEBI. Without SEBI's registration, if someone is doing this job, that is a that is an offense under the SEBI Act. Uh, Leaving of fees like the SEBI, SEBI decides that who will pay for what activity, performing and exercising powers and register and regulate credit rating agency. So, all credit rating agency, they are also registered and regulated by the SEBI. Development function. This regulatory authority performs certain development functions also that include, but they are not limited to imparting training to intermediaries, promotion of fair trading and reduction of malpractice, carry out research work, encouraging self-regulation, uh, self-regulating organization and buy and sell mutual fund directly from AMC through a broker. So, they do lot of you know development functions also that people should know, people should get more training, people should and they do lot of research also. So, that research is available on the SEBI website. So, you know apart from uh, protection and regulatory function, they do lot of development functions for the all stakeholders. Powers of SEBI. When it comes to stock exchange, SEBI has the power to regulate and approve any law relating to the functions in the stock exchange. It has the powers to access the books of records and account for all the stock exchanges and it can arrange for the uh, check and returns into the working for the stock exchange. So, all stock exchange in our country and uh, all states, they are falling under the jurisdiction of the SEBI. Okay, so, they can go and check their documents, they can ask them what they are doing, how they are doing. So, because you know people are not doing only uh, you know investment in NAC or BSC, there are lot of regional stock exchanges and those stock exchanges are also coming under the SEBI. It can also conduct hearings and pass judgments if there are any malpractices detected to the stock exchange. So, SEBI also enjoys the power of the court. So, if there, if there are any crime as per the SEBI or in any uh, contravention under the SEBI law, then SEBI can act as a court also. You know, they can issue the notice, then they will hear the parties and after hearing the parties, they can impose penalties, they can take appropriate action. So, SEBI does not act just like a silent regulator, even they go for those people and they do the proper uh, legal and regulatory and the judicial activity and pass an order. When it comes to the treatment of companies, it has the power to get companies listed and delisted from any stock exchange in the country. So, if any con any company which wants to be listed in India like in BSC, NSC or any stock uh, market in country, they need to go to the SEBI and SEBI can allow them to list it or if any company is involved in any uh, malpractices, in an unethical, illegal activities, SEBI can delist that company from the stock exchange. Okay. So, following the uh, SEBI's power, the next power is it has the power to completely regulate all aspects of insider trading and announce penalties and exclusions if a company is caught during the something unethical. It can also make company list their shares in more than one stock exchange if they see that it will be beneficial to investors. 
Coming to investors protection, SEBI has the power to draft legal rules to ensure the protection of the general public. It also has the power to regulate the legislature of brokers and other middlemen who will deal with the investors in the market. So we will finish SEBI here. So I will summarize the role and power of the SEBI here. So the SEBI is the apex regulator in our country who regulates the stock exchange market in our country. Okay. It is in uh, the headquarter is in Bombay and then they have their regional offices in many cities in our country. And all stroke exchange, whether it is a national or regional, uh, they come under the uh, jurisdiction of the SEBI. The main job of SEBI is to protect the investors, to create the environment where lot of companies are interested to go for the stocks and the job and responsibility of the middleman. Because we need the middleman, we need brokers, we need sub brokers, you know, because to take care of the need of the millions people in this country. We need someone who can help them. But at the same time, SEBI creates an environment where everyone uh, works in a very, very accountable and transparent manner. And if anyone or any company is involved in any unethical, illegal, insider trading or any type of malpractices, SEBI got a lot of power, civil as well as criminal, to prosecute against those people as well as the companies. Okay. So, I think SEBI is very important regulator in our country and uh, what we have observed that uh, after 1998 or maybe 2000, uh, there are very few like uh, schemes in the stock exchange market. I am not saying that everything is very clean, but however, if you see the history of the last 15 years in, in our country, then we, we have seen very, very few uh, big schemes in our stock exchange market. So, SEBI is regulating stock market very successfully, very effectively and all like, that is why we can see our stock exchange market is emerging and growing at very high speed. So, I think the credit must go to the SEBI and how this is important for you knowing about the SEBI that if you are working any financial market or banking market or anything which is relating to the trade of the stocks you know the security market you must follow the developments of SEBI with their rules, their regulations, their compliance manual, compliance requirements, everything issued by the SEBI uh, must be observed by you so that you can understand that how things are changing in the market, what type of new rules and regu regulations are coming into the market, how those rules and regulations are going to affect my business positive or negative. So, if you understand SEBI very well, you can work very effectively in the financial and capital market. Now, let us talk about the second regulator that is a insurance regulator. Students, you as you know that insurance is very, very important for the common man as well as for the businesses. The idea of insurance basically started in Europe in uh, 15th or 16th century. Uh, the first idea was that you know how to protect the people's life you know if the people dies then you know they lose everything maybe their family uh, you know they, they got nothing. So, then people started creating small communities societies and they start you know putting some money and this is how they were creating an environment where the collective responsibility is uh, being developed and protecting the people. Okay. So, insurance is very, very important and very crucial for the people's life, you know. If any insurance company fails to perform, uh, perform its obligations, uh, that is a disaster for anyone like it, whether it is an individual or a company like for example, if a company got an uh, fire insurance okay, and they are paying their uh, premiums in a very regular manner, but if a fire uh, happens then if they lose their business. And if the insurance company is not ready to pay them, uh, that is a disaster for a businessman. Okay. So, insurance is very, very important for everyone. If, when it is very important, then obviously we need to regulate it properly so that uh, companies cannot manipulate uh, their situation with the customers. Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority IRDA, also called IRDA, is the supreme authority that authorized the functioning of insurance business in India. It was established by IRDA Act 1999. 
the primary purpose of irda is to safeguard the interest of the policy holders and also ensure the growth of insurance in the country objectives of irda uh, carry forward the interest of policy holders policy holders can be individuals as well as the companies uphold the development of the insurance sector so see that's a larger goal the what irda wants that insurance sector itself should grow okay ensure quick resolution of claims that's very important because in insurance you are paying premium in case if something goes wrong in your life you must get your claims quickly you know this this mechanism should be quick fair and efficient prevent fraud and malpractices by the insurance companies by the insurance agents ensure fair conduct of the financial market when dealing with the insurance functions of uh, irda to provide applicant with a registration certificate renewal modification withdrawal suspension or cancellation of such registration okay to protect the policy holders interest in case of assigning and nominating policy holders understanding insurance claims insurable interest uh, surrendering the value of the policy and other terms and conditions of the insurance contract so see as i told you that insurance contract cannot be cannot be treated just like a normal contract where the insurer uh, insurance companies can put any clause so the irda ensures that their their clauses agreement clauses their contract clauses should not affect the public in negative manner okay so they they also examine those clauses and in case if they find any problem they issue guidelines they issue notices that please remove this clause and this clause should be like this you know in the interest of the policy holders to mention required qualifications code of conduct and practical training for intermediate intermediaries and insurance inter, intermediaries and agents so uh, ird also ensures that insurance companies the insurance agents and any companies which are working as a middleman between the insurance company and policy holders they must get required qualification and training like it should not be like that anybody can become the insurance agent that every company everyone who is connecting the insurance companies and the policy holders they must get proper training and they must get required qualification also to explain the code of conduct applicable to the surveyor as well as to the assessors okay so surveyors and assessors they are also very important part of the uh, insurance sector because if something goes wrong and you go for the claim then these people assessors surveyors they file the report so they all they should also be properly trained and regulated by the irda ensure the efficiency and proficiency of the conduct of the insurance business and to encourage as well as the regulate the relationship of professional organizations and the insurance and reinsurance businesses and to levy the charge in order to carry out the purpose of the act to call for information undertaking in inspection conducting inquiries and investigations including the audit of insurer intermediaries uh, insurance intermediaries and other organization connected with the insurance business so what they can do they can ask for the information from all these stock uh, stakeholders you know that you please provide me this information that information so that we can ensure that you are not doing anything wrong they, they can undertake in inspection also you know they can go to those premises they can do inspections they can conduct inquiries and investigations if they find any complaint against an insurance company including the audit of insurer if they want they can do audit also of that insure insurance company to regulate the control the rates benefit terms and conditions offered to the insurer pertaining to the general insurance business not controlled and regulated by the tariff advisory committee under section 64 of the insurance act to specify the way in which the book should be maintained and the manner in which the statement of accounts is to be rendered by the insurance and by the insurance companies so they also uh, work on the standard standardization of the accounting system in the insurance to maintain the investment funds by the insurance companies okay 
regulation of the maintenance of the margin uh, uh, solvency that is very important because RBI, uh, IDBI ensures that all insurance companies must be financially sound. If they are struggling with their finance then if the claim comes then they would not be able to pay. So, they maintain that the margin margin uh, solvency that obviously, they ask them to put some amount of money with the uh, IDBI and they also ask them to maintain the profit ratio also. If they are going in losses then that is a red signal for the policy holders. To decide the disputes among the insurer and the intermediaries of the insurance in intermediaries to administer the functioning of the tariff advisory committee. Setting down the percentage of premium income of the insurer of the financial scheme to promote and regulate the professional organizations to safeguard the interest of the policy holders in case of the assigning and nomination of the policy holders. Setting out the percentage of life insurance business and general insurance business to be taken ahead by the insurer in the rural and social sector. So, the uh, this or this you know they also ensure that in rural and social sector these companies should invest more time and energy because there there is a real need ok. There is a real need. So, they also maintain the life insurance business and general insurance business. To regulate the insurance industry in a way that ensures financial soundness of that uh, of the applicable laws and regulation. So, that insurance industry should be financially sound you know if they do not have enough capital and money and cash flow and profits that can be a very great red signal for everyone. To create laws to remove any scope of ambiguity and in the insurance sector. So, in case if there are any ambiguity created by the law or by the judgments of the courts they create they remove that uh, ambiguity through their rules and regulations. Organization setup of IRDA, IRD is a 10 member body consists of one chairman for 5 years and maximum is 60 years, 5 uh, whole time members for 5 years and maximum is 62 years, 4 part time members not more than 5 years. The chairman and members of IRD are appointed by the government of the India. The present chairman of IRD is Subhash Chandra Kuntia. Try. So, before moving to try I will summarize the main uh, points in the IRDA. So, IRDA is the apex body in India if you are working in the insurance sector ok. So, all in, 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 when I say insurance sector it is not only insurance companies, insurance agents, insurance uh, intermediaries, reinsurance companies. If you are working in that particular sector ok then you have to comply with the all rules and regulations of IRDA. Okay. So, that is very important to understand that IRDA is the organization which not only helps the investors, but it also helps the companies to create an environment where they can reach out to maximum population in our country. Still not more than 3 percent of Indian population is covered by the insurance. So, it is a huge scope for the insurance companies. But at the same time IRDA does not want that they those companies and those stakeholders they indulge in any anti uh, policy holder policy or unfair or fraud or cheating anything like that ok. So, uh, they are taking care of the entire insurance sector. The next agency is TRI the telecom regulatory authority of India has came into being as a consequences of opening of the teleco telecommunications sector to private operators. It was set up under the TRI Act of 1997. The telecom regulatory TRI was established with the effect from February 20, 1997 by an act of parliament called the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India Act 1997. It was established to regulate telecom services including fixation, revision of tariffs and telecom services which were earlier vested in the central government. So, this was a time where the central government opened the telecom sector. So, before 1997 no private player can enter into the uh, telecom sector. So, they opened the private sector and because of that openness now we can see in 2022 almost uh, 800 million uh, almost like 80 crore people are using mobile and internet in our country. Tri structure, 
try shall have in addition to its chairman at least two full time members and not more than two part time members all appointed by the central government. The member should have special knowledge or professional experience in telecom industry, finance, accountancy, law, management and consumer affairs. Only those seniors and retired government officers can be appointed as a member who have served for at least three years as a secretary or additional secretary to the union or state government. Okay. Powers and functions of TRI to recommend the need of and timing of introduction of new service providers and terms and conditions for the license to service provider to ensure technical compatibility and interconnect between different service providers and regulate their revenue sharing arrangement to ensure compliance with terms of license and revaluation re of the same for non compliance to lay down and ensure a time period for providing long distance and local distance circuits to facilitate uh, competition and promote efficiency in operations to promote the growth of telecom services to promote consumer interest monitor quality of service inspect equipment used in the network and make the recommendation about such equipment to maintain a register of interconnect agreement and keep it open for the inspection and to settle disputes among the service providers in this respect so you can see the power of and power and functioning of try are very very wide you know they are they are not only dealing with the uh, uh, the pricing and technological part but they are dealing the overall operations of a telecom sector and they also give advice to the government on any matter related to the telecom industry they also impose levy taxes and charges for services and ensure that universal service obligations are compliant with. So, they, they also force those companies that you need to do, uh, you need to expand your business, your services in rural and semi urban areas also to perform any other administration and financial functions as may be entrusted to the by the central government. Objectives of TRI TRI's mission is to create and nurture conditions for the growth of the communication sector in the economy in our country tri regulates telecom services including fixation revision of tariff for uh, telecom services which were earlier vested in the government it also aims to provide a fair and transparent policy environment which promotes a level playing field and facilitate fair competition that's very very important job of the tri Try not only helps the companies to understand what are the rules, regulations, government policies, so that they can integrate those rules, regulations and policies in their business strategies, so that in long term they can design how they want to develop in the telecom sector. So, the, the main role of try is to give them clarity. Second role is that no one should abuse its dominance in the telecom sector. So, if there is not a fair competition in the telecom sector try can intervene and solve the issue power of try order for furnishing information it can also upon any service provider to furnish in writing the information or explanation relating to its affair as the authority may require appointment for inquiry the authority may appoint one or more person to make an inquiry in relation to the affairs of any service provider orders from inspection it is empowered to direct any of its officials or employees to inspect the books of the accounts of other documents of any service provider issue directions to the service providers the, the authority also uh, have the power to issue such directions to the service providers as it may consider necessary for proper functioning of the service providers so now we, we will see few important cases of all these regulatory bodies the first and the important one is the sebi versus sahara i think we all heard about the sahara case where the sebi initiated the inquiry and due to the sebi intervention uh, finally the head of the sahara went to tihar jail also initially there was a floating issue of operationally fully convertible debentures with Sahara India Real Estate Corporation Limited and Sahara Housing Investment Corporation Limited, which affected the collective subscription from 25th April 2008 
up to 30th 2011 april 2011 the company backed roughly rupees 17656 crore during this period this whole amount was collected in the name of private placement from 30 million investors without fulfilling the requirement needed to comply with public offering of securities so as a result the whole uh, the whole uh, the time members of sebi passed an order on 23rd june 2011 to restrict the company's promoters including mr subartho roy from reaching the security market sahara appealed the order to the whole time members in the front of securities appellate tribunal set and the appeal was dismissed by the set through an order of 18th october 2011 in the end, Sahara appealed in the front of Supreme Court against the set order. So, what were the issues in the SEBI versus Sahara case? The first issue was that the whether SEBI has its jurisdiction over this matter under section 11, 11A and 11B of the SEBI Act and section 51A of the Companies Act or this matter comes under the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. The second issue was whether hybrid operational fully convertible de debentures comes under the category of securities as defined in the Companies Act, SEBI Act and SCRA to follow SEBI to have jurisdiction to investigate the case. The third issue was that OFCDs subscribed by the, P, uh, by the people in a private placement or not. If not, then who has the jurisdiction over this matter? The fourth issue was when the provisions given under se section 73 of the Companies Act is appealed over the case or not. The fourth is fifth issue was that whether the provision provided the public utilities companies 2003 will have jurisdiction over this case. So, this case was become very very complex basically. The, the basic idea was that the Sahara took uh, little 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 money from 3 crore people in our country. Okay. And the argument of SEBI that you cannot collect money like this because you are not issuing any share, you know. So, your deal is not acceptable as per the SEBI rules and regulation. The, the argument of Sahara that we are not issuing any share, so therefore, there is no jurisdiction of SEBI in this matter, okay. So, there was a jurisdiction issue. In this case, the Supreme Court held that SEBI has no jurisdiction to investigate or adjudicate this matter as SEBI Act allows SEBI with special power to protect of the investors. The power given to the SEBI can also supersede other regulatory providers under different laws which means SEBI must respect the provision of other laws and must not conflict with the Ministry of Corporate Affairs where the uh, interest of investors are at stake. So, the Supreme Court also laid down objectives of the enactment of the SEBI Act and inserted section 5A in the Companies Act to provide special powers to SEBI in the matter related to the company's transfer of securities. The Supreme Court advised the SEBI has a jurisdiction to administer the listed public companies in matters related to the transfer of securities and also in those public companies where there is intended to obtain the securities which are listed the stock exchange of India. The Supreme Court also stated that the OFCDs issued by the companies are in the nature of hybrid instrument. So, it does not come under scrutiny within the definition provided by the Companies Act and SCRA. As the definition of securities provided under section 2H of SCRA contains marketable security rather than hybrid instruments. So the, so, the court cannot question the marketability of the instruments as it was offered to millions of people and debentures came under scrutiny as described by the provision of SEBI Act, the Companies Act and SCRA. The Supreme Court was also described the intention of the companies was to show that OFCDs as the public placement but they do not act like when they offer to more than 50 people. Section 67.3 states that any security which is offered and subscribed by more than 50 people will be considered as a public offer which gives the jurisdiction to SEBI and companies have to comply with the all legal provisions related to the matter. Sahara argued that the Companies Act is not applicable as it is 
apply to only listed companies and no company can be forced to get listed on the stock exchange market. The Supreme Court rejected this argument and stated that law is clear and impartial. The Supreme Court also observed that Section 731 of the Act provides a restriction on every company intending to offer shares and debenture to the public. So, the Sahara's argument that we are not we are, we are doing this business outside of the preview of SEBI, we are not listed in the SEBI for that purpose. So, SEBI does not have any jurisdiction on us. Okay. So, finally, this case was settled the Sahara versus SEBI, but it was a huge uh, case in the Indian SEBI history. And finally, because of this case, the Subartho Roy uh, remained in the jail for a very longer period. And they finally, they got an order from the Supreme Court that they will return this money to the people. Okay. So, I think that was the intervention of the SEBI against a very, very big company. Okay. The next case is KP Desai versus United India Insurance Company Maharashtra IRDA case. When KP Desai underwent a lesser eye surgery for correcting his eyesight, it cost him 50,000 rupees. Desai had a health insurance policy with the United India Insurance Company since 1990, which he renewed every year. After the surgery in 1997, he, when he filed a claim for the surgery expenses, the company rejected it, stating that the surgery was purely cosmetic and not covered by the insurance. Desai filed a complaint with the South Mumbai District Consumer Dispute Redressal Forum in 1997 and the judgment ruled in his favor in April 2004. The insurance companies then filed an appeal with the Maharashtra State uh, Dispute Redressal Forum where the judgment was upheld. Okay. So, if you are not happy with the insurance company's order, you can uh, contact to IRDA as well as the consumer forums. New India Insurance versus Ashok Kumar. Ashok Kumar purchased a second hand car in November 2006 which was insured by New India Insurance by the previous owner. Kumar did not inform the insurance company about the registration transfer or get the insurance policy transferred to his name. When Kumar filed a claim on the car being stolen in the March 2007, his claim was rejected on the grounds that the claim was not in, in his name. Kumar filed a lawsuit and the Delhi District Commission and the State Commission ruled in his favor. New Indian, uh, this company filed an appeal with the National Commission which ruled in the favor of stating that IRDA regulations according to which the insurance company must be informed about the vehicle transfer within 14 days if not the insurance company is not liable to reimburse the claim. So, if you read the IRDA rules guidelines then you can understand under which condition my claim will be accepted or rejected. So, we are talking about the uh, theories of regulation. So, we talked about the positive theory now we will talk about the normative theory. So, normative theories of regulation generally conclude that regulation should encourage competition uh, where feasible minimize the cost of information asymmetries by obtaining information and providing operators with incentive to improve their performance. Provide for price structure that provide that improve economic efficiency and Establish regulatory process that provide for regulatory uh, regulation under the law and independence, transparency, pred predictability, legitimacy and creditability for the regulatory uh, system. And the principal agent theory says addresses issues of information asymmetry which in the context of utility regulation generally means that the operator knows more about its ability and efforts about the utility market than the regulator. So, these are just theories. What I was trying to say in through these theories that the basic idea of regulatory theories is that we want an ecosystem where things work in a very transparent manner in the most accountable manner. Okay. And these regulatory bodies they are working in a very very specialized area. And if as a business and a person, if you understand the nitty gritties of these regulatory bodies, like if you just know what they do, what they do not do, their rules and regulations and uh, if you comply them with the full spirit, you know, then it not only saves your company from the regulatory uh, violations, civil and criminal penalties, 
but at the private level in your individual life you can take advantage of the provisions of these regulatory bodies. So, now in India we have almost more than 50 to 60 regulatory bodies and every year the government is introducing new more specialized regulatory bodies. So, you need to understand that law does not mean only courts outside of the court there are so many regulatory bodies they are acting as an administrative agency as well as the judicial academy judicial activity also they are listening cases they are giving their orders so they are acting like a court ok. So, when you see any regulators order you should not presume that it is a government order it is a regulatory order supported by the government support, but it has complete legal value ok. The, uh, it, it, it should be treated just like a normal court order ok. So, with these words I believe you, you have basic understanding of regulatory theories and I have given introduction of three regulators like the SEBI, IRDA and TRI what they do, how they do. So, if you can find more and more regulators in India but the basic theory will remain the same that it they want to create efficiency, transparency and accountability in the market in the favor of the uh, consumers, investors and the overall objective is national economy should grow with the help of these regulators. Thank you. Thank you.